Hi everyone, welcome back to part 2 of the drawing materials um, video demos. In this one I'll be having a look at the bits and pieces that we use um, when we're doing graphite pencil drawings, you know, such as pencil sharpeners, erasers and all the other bits and bobs. So first up we'll, we'll take a look at pencil sharpeners. Um, this one is a battery powered pencil sharpener and it's called the Auto Pencil Sharpener. Um, I mainly use this one now for coloured pencils because coloured pencils wear down pretty quick and it can be a pain in the neck to keep sharpening them every five minutes you know, on a manual pencil sharpener. So it's nice just to have that in front of you and just pop the pencils in there, take them out and they're done within seconds. So it's a very, very useful piece of kit. They're quite cheap as well. I think you can find these on Amazon and eBay um, for not, not much money at all. Very nice to have. I used to use um, the Derwent pencil sharpener um, that comes with its own little box which catches all the shavings and everything. Um, but it came with this plastic sharpener here with um, a pencil sharpener that side, and it looks like a crayon sharpener or uh, I don't know, pastel sharpener or something on that side. I don't use anything quite that big. And this wasn't particularly brilliant anyway, so I swapped it out and put a Faber Castell. Um, double sharpener in there which fits quite nicely and works much better. Um, it's a nice nice little sharpener for um, going out sketching and travelling, you know it's lightweight, it stores all your bits and pieces and shavings in there and it'll fit in your pocket or your art bag or whatever so that's another nice one. But I found something which um, I prefer actually um, it's this one here, it's by a company called Coom um, which is spelled K-U-M, I'm not too sure how you pronounce that. Um, it's made in Germany and it's called the Long Point Sharpener. And basically what it does, if I just open that up so you can see inside, um, this, at this end here is so that you can sharpen um, mechanical pencils like these. A 2 mil one goes in one side and a 3 mil fits in the other. And then just along there, we've got some spare blades for these, which is you know very useful. And you can see in there that it says stop. So basically, what happens is um, if we put a pencil in there, in the first one, and sharpen that, it'll go so far in and it'll stop there. And I'll just demonstrate this for you. You turn it. You can hear the shavings coming off, and you can see them coming off. And then all of a sudden. When it's taken enough of the shavings off, it goes like that. It goes absolutely loose. There's no more resistance, no more shavings coming off. So then you take it out and you look at the point and you think, oh, that's awful. That really looks peculiar. So then you put it in the second hole and you turn it and it's the same principle. It'll get so far and then all of a sudden it'll just stop and you'll know when it's done. So if I compare that with um, a standard sharpened pencil, the bottom one here is the long point and the one on top is just, um, I think it might have been the, the battery uh, sharpener actually. So I prefer the long point, it seems nicer for drawing, um, it just feels feels better when you're using them. Uh, but that's just my choice, you know, you, you see how you go, you might... Um, not be interested in any of this, you might just prefer a simple uh, little pencil sharpener like that. Um, the next one up, which was the dearest one of the lot, is probably that one cost me more than probably those three put together. Yeah, literally. Um, it's by a company called Dukes, D U X, Germany again. It's solid brass, it's very, very high precision, very accurate. It gives excellent results every single time and it came with its own uh, leather pouch and a packet of spare blades which is you know always nice to have um, but as you'll notice with this one it's got a button on the bottom here and there's three degrees on there I don't know if you can see that you know that turns to that mark there and 
that will give you three different degrees of sharpness um, from absolute needlepoint sharpness to where the lead almost breaks on your paper when you touch it it's that sharp and then like one that's not quite so sharp and then one that's quite rounded which some people prefer for coloured pencils or design work or whatever but that one actually gives you the choice um, so it's a very nice uh, pencil sharpener to have and that was the one I used for years um, I still use it occasionally but I've kind of switched over to this one now um, and before all that I used to use this little magnesium um, pencil sharpener here nothing wrong with them they do a fantastic job um, you know if that's all you've got don't worry about it they're absolutely fine um, it's always nice to get a set of spare blades as well because um, you'll be surprised how many sharpeners um, um, you know the blades go blunt very very quickly literally within sort of 10 or 20 pencils and you'll start noticing that um, you know the, the leads are breaking in the ends things are getting stuck everything's getting stiff and you start blaming the pencil sharpener when all you need to do is just undo that screw swap the blade over and it's like a new pencil sharpener again oops sorry I'm not with the camera then um, so that's that for pencil sharpeners let's move these out of the way I mean I've been drawing for 20 years and accumulated quite a lot of drawing stuff I'm not saying that you have to you know have all this stuff you really really don't um, I'm just giving you a few ideas here um, of what you, you could buy if you wanted to um, so if we look at erasers now you're probably thinking that's a lot of eraser smoother you must really really make a lot of mistakes when you're drawing well <laughs> yeah I do I mean I do make mistakes we all do um, obviously not that many but um, that's not why I've got um, all these erasers um, I mainly use them for highlighting and lightening up certain areas and making um, certain marks of different sizes and shapes etc um, like in one of the last videos I, I spoke about um, pencil erasers and I recommended the, the Derwent one because it was quite soft and sticky and then the next one was the Faber-Castell and I didn't mention this one but it's by um, Stedler and the tip on that is quite hard it will virtually rub out anything including holes in your paper so you have to be quite careful with that one and it comes with a brush on the end the same as the Derwent one which is quite useful for you know brushing away with your eraser bits um, so that's those another one I like to use is the um, the Derwent battery eraser um, it's quite simple to use there's a button there you just press that and the tip rotates and it removes um, graphite really effectively and it's great for doing certain effects um, I've used them on bigger scale drawings for leaves and foliage and things like that um, great fun to use um, I do recommend getting one of those I think you'll enjoy using it um, and here's another favorite of mine um, it's called the Tombow Mono Eraser it's got a um, 2.3 tip in the end and if you can see that and get that to focus there we go if I just push that out a bit more it's very similar to a me uh, mechanical pencil or clutch pencil you just press the end and the eraser pops out um, 2.3 mm that is very very fine for an eraser so it's obviously not super soft or that's just going to fall apart so it's quite quite a hard eraser um, but it's very efficient and I use that for detailed work, highlights in water, um, highlights on anything really. It's a very, very useful piece of kit that one. I recommend getting one of those. And you can also get um, refills for it as well, which is uh, very nice and useful. Oh, and the same applies for the battery eraser. I forgot to mention as well, they come with a pack of refills when you buy them. But you can buy them separately anyway. And this one same again it's like um, a clutch pencil or mechanical pencil you press the end and the eraser pops out but you can see that this one's quite thick quite chunky and I just use that one for um, just 
you know, general erasing, sometimes for highlights and things like that. And also, it comes with um, refills as well. And these um, sort of standard erasers, they came in a pack together, the art eraser and the soft art eraser. I've not used the, art, the soft art eraser yet, um, but I've used that one um, a few times, and that's quite effective. And the kneadable putty eraser, which is that one, or that one, that's what they look like when they're out of the packet. Soft and squidgy, and you can make them into a fine point or a large flat area for lightening areas up of graphite. Very useful, they're, they're an absolute must have. Um, they're not expensive either. These are, that's the Windsor & Newton one. Uh, if need a pulley razor, and that's the Koinor one. It comes in a little plastic box, which is very useful for keeping um, bits from your eraser. Because you'll find that when you have that rolling around in your pencil case or your art box for a while, it seems just to pick up all the little bits and pieces that are rolling around in there, and it you know soon becomes unusable. So it's nice to keep them dust free. So there we go. Okay, so that's that. Move these out of the way. Another very useful item um, which I recommend you get in is the pencil extender. Um, if you're like me and you like to wear your pencils right down to the very end, like this, I mean, that's how far down you can take your pencils when you've got a pencil extender. Um, I mean you can imagine that I mean that's impossible to actually use. So using one of these are quite simple to use. You just screw the end, there's a little gripper in there, and you just put the pencil in, tighten it back up. Oops, might get it the right way, that's it. And that'll extend the life of your pencil again. Actually, I didn't get that quite right. There we go. That's better. And that's good to go. Very useful piece of kit. Right, OK. Um, I think it's time for a confession. Yep, I use set squares and rulers. <laughs> well, you know. I mean, some people say it's cheating, um, other people say it's okay, I think it's okay, don't you? I mean, come on, really, I mean, it's only a set square and a ruler. Um, I mean, to those people that think it's, it's cheating, oh, that's, that's, that's your opinion, um, you know, sue me. <laughs> I mean, what more can I say? Each, each to their own. I threw the rule book away a long time ago. Um, you know, I've had lots of bad advice when it's come to drawing and equipment and things like that. So I tend not to listen anymore and I tend just to do my own thing. And what works for me um, just seems to improve my art. So I recommend the same for you. You know, don't listen to, you know, what people say. You can't use this, you can't use that. And I mean, don't even listen to me. I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. But just do your own thing and you'll find that when you do, um, your art will become a lot more freer. You'll start enjoying it more and you'll get better results. Um, I mean, I spent years um, you know, reading books and following other artists and what they were doing. And it's all great learning experience, but if, you, if you're gonna you know, follow the rules to a T, you, you're kind of boxing yourself in, really. And it doesn't make for very good art, I don't think. But anyway, I've confessed to it. I use rulers and set squares. Um, and I don't mind using them, so, you know, don't worry about it. Just use what you want. Okay, that's that out of the way. Another useful tool is this. It's a watercolour hake brush. Um, I used to use it for watercolour painting. Um, it's, it's about 20 years old, I think. And I've since used it for um, varnishing and wood stain. So it's no good for uh, watercolour anymore. But what I use it for now... Is uh, brushing, you know, bits of graphite powder or bits and pieces of eraser 
off the drawing. Um, it's better to use one of these instead of your handle. Sorry about that, the camera's just cut out again. What I was saying was it's better to use one of these um, instead of using your hand because you're going to smudge your picture if you keep using your hand. So use something soft like that and you'll save your pictures. Now, if you're into watercolour painting and you like hate brush painting, um, I'm subscribed to somebody called Dave Usher. Now, he's a very talented artist. He paints in acrylics and watercolours. Um, he uses a hate brush, a bigger one than this, and he does some amazing paintings, sort of loose, impressionistic watercolours um, of landscapes. Um, I really recommend you go and check Dave's channel out if you're into um, hate brush painting, and he'll show you how to use one of these properly. Really talented artist. And next we'll talk about blenders, paper blenders or paper stumps, blending stumps, they have several names. Um, you can buy a pack of three or you can buy them individually to the size um, that suits your style. Um, the idea behind them is that they compress paper and you can blend your graphite in with them and what happens is they get all covered in graphite like this one has. And then the idea is you're supposed to get sandpaper or a sanding block and then sand all the dirt off and get them back to nice and clean again. Which is all well and good if you need a clean paper stump, but I much prefer leaving the graphite on there and using them as a drawing tool um, in their own right. I mean, they, they, they make some lovely um, smudgy marks and lovely for you know, blending techniques and drawing all sorts of things you know that you want a soft appearance with. Now you've seen me use this um, in both of the last demos in fact for foliage and doing uh, reflections in water. This is one of those um, bits of kit that if I didn't have this with me I wouldn't even bother drawing. It's so important. Um, you might not like using it, you might like using your finger. I tend not to because it can leave um, oil on the paper and leave marks. But if you don't like using um, blending stumps, something else you can use is, is a piece of kitchen towel. Um, I mean, I use a piece of kitchen towel anyway for uh, blending large areas like sky. So I just fold it over nice and flat so it's smooth. And you can just rub and blend in the graphite nicely. You have to keep working at it. But if you... Um, Fold that over like that, and then fold it over again. And you can roll it over as best as you can and keep it nice and tight at the end. Basically, you've got the same sort of thing. I could have got a better point there. You've got the same sort of thing as a paper stump. They work in exactly the same way. Um, you know, and they don't cost anything at all. So that's a cheap way around it. Another, th another thing that's quite good to use is um, a Q-tip or cotton bud. As you can see, I've um, used this one quite a bit. So they, they can all actually make different sort of marks. So if you if you kind of play around with them, um, just you know, scrape a bit of graphite on some paper or draw a bit of graphite and just have a go and see what suits you best. All right, okay. And now, talk about these things. These are called embossing tools. Now the idea behind these is, I'll just get some paper to demonstrate. That. The idea with these, you probably already know, but for those that don't, I'll just explain it. Um, they're, they're made by Derwent and you, you buy them two in a pack like this and they have a point on each end and each one has this little call it just a little round steel bit and each one is a different size um, if I show you the large one that will show up better on camera and the idea is um, that you draw with these so if I just, it's very difficult because you can't really see what you're doing you have to sort of put a light at the side to see what you're doing but you just draw and press into the paper with it and it embosses the paper and the idea is um, let me just get a pencil and show you that once you've embossed it if you shade over it it 
best to use the pencil on the side as well because if you use the point that might go into the into the grooves there and fill it in and that's that's not the effect we're looking for but they kind of do that thing uh, you know like fine white lines and areas where you don't want the graphite to go it can be useful for, you know for landscape paintings if you've got a row of white fencing uh, white railings or window frames and you need to just kind of shade over and blend everything in um, that can be very useful but a word of warning if you are going to use this and you're using it in a sketch pad um, make sure you put a piece of card or several pieces of um, scrap paper underneath the drawing that you're doing so that it doesn't mark the page underneath um, ask me how I know yeah, I've, I've done that. I've, I've ruined a few pages by doing that. So I don't often use these anymore, but um, you know, it might give you a few ideas. So I thought I'd just mention them. So there we go. That's that's the embossing tools. And um, the last thing that I want to talk about is something that Larry Nelson actually mentioned about using fixative for doing pencil and wash techniques. Now I bought this one called Spectrafix, it's a water based um, fixative for pastel, pencil, charcoal, watercolour, crayon etc. Um, it's non toxic so you can use it in the house, it's quite safe and it's from a milk casein formula which is basically um, PVA glue, you know white wood glue. Um, now the first few attempts with this were absolutely disastrous until I got um, used to how to using it. First of all, I'd done a nice drawing on a piece of cartridge paper and I thought, right, I'll wash over that with watercolour. And the idea being that you put fixative over the graphite and the graphite doesn't smudge up and dissolve into the um, washes of watercolour and go all dull and murky and horrible looking. So as soon as I sprayed the pencil drawing with this, um, I, I thought I'll give it a good thick coat to make sure it's really sealed. And what happened was the cartridge paper just buckled and cockled and was a right mess and I gave up. So I thought that was the end of that and this was a waste of time. But I've been practicing with it and I've found that if you actually use watercolour paper, good quality watercolour paper, and you put this stuff on in two very light coats instead of one heavy one, um, it works much better. And it allows watercolour to actually soak into the paper as well without um, disturbing the graphite too much. So I've been having a few good results with this and I should probably be posting a video of some of the pencil and washes I've been doing. I might do a time lapse or I might do um, like a gallery slideshow type thing. I don't know yet but I will be showing you more about this. So anyway I hope that was useful for you. Um, any questions, any comments leave them in the box below um, and I will get back to you as I always do. Um, so thanks for viewing and I'll see you next time.